The manga begins with a man intensely playing a video game, trying to take down the boss which he managed to do with the help of his friends. Suddenly he immediately felt intense pain, leading to him falling to the floor. Up until then, the man had lived a good life. The doctor told him he only had three years to live because they had found a heart disease for which no cure had been found yet. The man's chances of survival were pretty much zero. They warned him that the next time he had a heart attack, he would die. The man decided to quit his job and poured all his energy into his hobby, a VRMO called Broken Balance Online, commonly known as BBO. The man ended up becoming one of the strongest players on the server. Due to his illness, his reflexes and speed could no longer catch up to the others. However, his knowledge in BBO was still second to none. When the day finally arrived for him to fully use his knowledge and manage to beat a boss considered impossible for the next three years, he really wished that he could have lived longer to witness the events after. As he could barely use his fingers, the man used the very last of his strength to inform his colleagues that he was very grateful to them. After closing his eyes and accepting his demise, he was surprised to wake up in a bed. Memories came rushing to his head, and he then realized that he was reincarnated in another world with the memories of his past life. The man's name was now Eldo, the fourth son of a lower noble in a remote area. His family didn't think of him as a person, and the only person who spoke to him was his oldest sibling, while the rest of his current family just ignored him. Eldo could only guess the reason for their treatment was that, after he was born, they had three years of poor harvest, which eventually led to him being branded as the god of pestilence. Due to Eldo being underage, his parents couldn't kick him out of the house yet. However, he would be turning 15 the next day, and would officially become an adult. After undergoing the coming-of-age ceremony, Eldo would be officially banished from the city and be on his own. Knowing these facts, Eldo was far from being hopeless, as the world he was reincarnated into was just like the game he used to play, Broken Balance Online. Aside from the coming-of-age ceremony, magic skills and jobs also existed in BBO. Jobs that are similarly told in fantasy stories like Magician and Swordsman. Even the skills they use are the same as BBOs. An example would be a swordsman's first skill they learned was Whirlwind Slash, and for magicians, it was Magic Ball. Eldo was able to confirm that the skills also worked the same in BBO when his older brother was bragging to him about it. Eldo's current job was Novice, as the name suggests. It's a job for people who don't actually have a proper job yet, and the Novice was the weakest job. Trying to test out his theory, Eldo cast a low-level recovery magic called Self-Care. After confirming his theory, Eldo realized that the system of the world was the same as BBO. However, there was a crucial difference from BBO. The general population had an overwhelming lack of knowledge in magic and skills. An example would be the skill he just cast. Self-care is not a very powerful skill, but since anyone can use it and has low magic consumption, it was still very handy. However, Eldo has not seen anyone use the skill ever. Eldo's unfortunate reality just became a blessing in disguise. Rather than being stuck and staying at a noble's house, Eldo would rather get kicked out and become much stronger. Furthermore, he has the most vast knowledge regarding BBO which makes it easy for him to survive. His older brother then visited him, asking how he feels for tomorrow's coming-of-age ceremony. His brother was surprised when Eldo told him that he does not want to undergo the ceremony. Even after reassuring him that the costs would not be his worry, Eldo was still persistent in not pushing through the ceremony. There were two ways to get a job. One was the coming-of-age ceremony, and the other was to get the job at the Royal Capital's church. The large church of the royal capital had a fairly superior performance compared to the other churches. One could get a high-level job unlike the others. Eldo's older brother warned him of the precautions of his decision and he may end up becoming a novice all his life. Eldo understands his brother's warning. Instead, he asked a favor of him to inform his father of his decision, since if it was Eldo that were to inform their father, then he would just be ignored. After knowing Eldo's decision, his father woke him up the next day and immediately kicked him out as soon as he woke up. Leaving his home, Eldo was only left with a shabby sword and 10,000 gil, which was the same as one yen on earth. As he was about to get out of the city, Eldo was surprised to see his brother waiting for him. When his older brother learned of Eldo's plans on becoming an adventurer, he gives him a hundred thousand gil and advises Eldo to make sure that he gets a source of income before the money runs out. Realizing that he was lucky to have a good older brother, Eldo refuses to accept the money and tells his brother that what he has was enough. After saying their goodbyes to each other, Eldo left the city and decided to go to a city with a guild established. Before heading to the Adventurer's Guild, Eldo hoped that he would not encounter any demons since the only weapon he had was a shabby sword. After looking at his surroundings, Eldo immediately made contact with a monster. A novice's enemy detection ability is low, so whenever a novice detects an enemy, so do the demons. Eldo could only wonder if the demon would let him run away to ask for help. The demon in front of him was one of the weakest demons called Wolf, 
As his first battle in the New World, being careless was not an option. Eldo still remembered the sensation of swinging a sword in BBO. The most important part was always the player's skill. Eldo focused on everything he had learned from BBO which made it easy for him to take on a demon even if he was a level 1 novice. Eldo's attack had a critical hit multiplier. It was a feature where if the player hits an enemy with all their strength, the system would multiply the damage dealt several times. Eldo was confident with his skills after experiencing first-hand battle. All the techniques he learned in BBO also applied to his new world. Eldo now confirms that he can manage living in his new world with the knowledge of BBO. Eldo was amazed at how naturally his body moved. If he could perform at 70% or more, he could get critical hits and be considered an experienced player. He wondered if it was because his instincts from when he played BBO were still there. Eldo then confirmed that another feature was also the same with BBO, and that was dismantling, extracting useful materials from monsters in order to make weapons and shields. It seems that people often complain and leave the carcass as they find it annoying and disgusting. Due to its excessively bad reputation, the auto-dismantling skill was implemented to dismantle the materials automatically. When Eldo tried the auto-dismantling, it had no response. For the finishing touch, he then used the skill cleaning on the materials which worked and found it quite useful. For some reason, the world he was reincarnated to was similar to BBO but also not quite the same. Eldo finally arrived at a town called Ilya. He was then approached by a man asking him if he was lost. After explaining to the man his predicament, the man gave Eldo advice that he should stop speaking formally, as adventurers don't use formal language. Adventurers speak in a way to make it harder to know the hierarchy in the group. If an adventurer hears Eldo speaking formally, they would immediately assume that Eldo was someone who doesn't know the basics and would be made fun of. After adjusting his words, the man then pointed to Eldo the direction to the Adventurer's Guild. When Eldo finally reached the Adventurer's Guild Ilya branch, the first thing his eyes caught was the world map placed on a wall. Recognizing that the capital was on the neighboring continent on the other side of the sea, Eldo immediately understood that traveling to another country would be a hassle. Luckily for him, the neighboring continent was not that far away. Knowing that he cannot yet achieve his first goal, Eldo decided to first check the request that the Ilya branch guild offers. A tip Eldo remembers was that you can see the types of monsters in the area if you look at the requests. And with that, Eldo can plan what to do next. Eldo was surprised and confused after learning that the wolf slaying request was a C rank. Requests were ranked from A to F. That means that wolf slaying is the third highest of the six levels. No matter how one could look at it, a monster's rank that can be defeated by a single hit from a novice shouldn't be that high. Eldo immediately could tell that something was wrong. Eldo then checked the F-rank requests where the wolf slaying should have been. He was curious as the monsters from the D-rank below requests were not familiar to him and did not exist in BBO. Wondering if the wolf he killed earlier was on the top three, Eldo cleared his thoughts and decided to bring the wolf's fang to the counter first. After exchanging greetings with the guild receptionist named Teresa, Eldo wanted to sell the monster's fang but acted like he did not know which monster it was from. After receiving a sermon from Teresa, Eldo was informed that the marketability depends on the monster's part, which makes no guarantees that Eldo could sell the fangs. When Eldo showed the fangs, they were surprised to find out that those were wolf fangs. Suspicious of Eldo, she asked if Eldo purchased the fangs from someone. Since there were some people who bought materials from other shops, selling them without a request to the guild wouldn't count as an achievement. Realizing that Teresa was misinterpreting his goal with obtaining easy achievements, Eldo explained that he had defeated the monster normally and wondered if the wolf was really a C-rank monster. After confirming by Teresa that the monster was indeed a C-rank based on the guild's bestiary, Eldo wondered if the one he defeated was weaker than usual. Teresa explained that the strength of monsters within the same species isn't that different, and what made Teresa more suspicious was that the fangs were too clean when Eldo mentioned that he just killed the monster. Eldo was not really too focused on who killed the monster but rather getting the funds was his priority. Curious if he could still sell the fangs, Eldo asked how much he could get from the fangs. Teresa responded that the fangs would usually be 32,000 gil, but since the fangs Eldo brought were so clean, the price was adjusted and was now 34,000 gil. After selling the fangs, Eldo asked if he could join the guild. Teresa informed Eldo that one must first take an easy exam with a fee of 5,000 gil. After receiving the deducted money, Teresa then asked Eldo if he had a job. After learning that Eldo was a novice, Teresa then reminded him that there would not be any reimbursements if Eldo were to fail. Teresa then handed out options for Eldo to choose for his exam. Eldo would be treated the same way regardless of the subject he chooses. All the requirements are to use job-exclusive skills, which makes it difficult for Eldo to pass since he was a novice who has no skill. The only option Eldo could take was a simulation battle against the examiner. Eldo knows that the option he chose was a difficult and unusual requirement. 
As a novice with low stats and no combat skills, he estimated that he was probably level 1, and no matter how accustomed he was in fighting in BBO, Eldo was not confident that he could defeat a well-trained swordsman. Realizing that if he were to lose, he would just lose 5,000 gil, Eldo wanted to give it a try. After accepting Eldo's request, Teresa then asked for Eldo to follow her after a few moments. After entering the training area, a trainer was standing in the middle asking Eldo if he was the novice that wanted to become an adventurer. Eldo was surprised when the examiner wished for him to withdraw from the exam for his safety, estimating that the examiner may be 10 times stronger than Eldo. If they were to cross swords even once, Eldo assumes that he would not hold even for a second and would be defeated easily. Eldo still decided to push through with his decision and asked the examiner for no serious injuries. After reassuring Eldo that he would only deal with minor injuries, Eldo then asked if he should also wield the same wooden sword as the examiner, but was told to use the sword that he has, even if it was a real sword. Even though Eldo was reassured that he may use a real sword, he was still worried and persists in using a wooden sword. After choosing the weapon, Teresa announced that she would be the referee of the match, and signaled for the match to begin. As the examiner was walking calmly, Eldo knew that the difference between them was too high for him, and if there was an opportunity to win, it would be a moment where the examiner uses a skill. The swordsman's skill was undoubtedly more powerful than a regular attack, but in exchange, they can't alter their movement halfway through. If the examiner doesn't use any skills, Eldo won't be able to do anything against the examiner's raw power and sword skills. The examiner finally made his move and dashed towards Eldo. Analyzing the examiner's position of attack, Eldo prepared himself from a standing position. However, Eldo was surprised when the examiner said, Guard Crash, a skill that takes down enemies guarding themselves by using overwhelming power. In doing such a bold move at the same time avoiding the attack, Eldo basically could tell that the examiner wanted Eldo to stay in place and take the attack head on. Eldo dodged the attack and assumed that the examiner's attack was on purpose. Not wanting to fail the exam, Eldo didn't hesitate to land a critical hit. Surprised at the result of the match, Teresa immediately called it in as Eldo's win. Wondering if he passed the exam, Eldo stared at the examiner confused. The examiner couldn't believe that he lost to a novice who didn't even use a skill. Eldo thanked the examiner as he still assumed that the examiner was still acting weak till the very end. Eldo asked the examiner if he had passed the test. The examiner responded that Eldo had passed with flying colors and was curious about where Eldo learned that type of swordsmanship. Eldo was cautious with his words as he didn't want to disclose that he learned the skill through playing a game in his previous life. Instead, he simply stated that he taught himself. In the game, Eldo used to swing his sword as much as possible and would stay up late at night with his friends discussing the most efficient ways to swing a sword. The examiner couldn't believe that Eldo taught himself and wasn't expecting to lose to a novice. Eldo humbly told the examiner that he only won because the examiner had gone easy on him. The examiner was confused by Eldo's comments since he had been serious throughout their fight. Eldo, still thinking that the examiner had taken it easy due to his job, smiled at the examiner, considering the exam completed effortlessly. After congratulating Eldo on passing the guild's admission exam, Teresa welcomed Eldo as a member of the Adventurer's Guild. After handing Eldo's guild card, Teresa asked Eldo if he wanted to hear the guild's guidelines. Accepting Teresa's offer, she started with the Adventurer's obligations, submitting false reports, divulging confidential information from the client, and disobeying the laws of the country they're currently working in were not tolerated and would face punishment. The punishment for breaking any of those obligations ranged from having one's license suspended to being sentenced to death. Remembering a feature in BBO where the player is forced to clear an emergency request, Eldo asked if they are required to provide help during an emergency. Teresa firmly stated that only those three obligations must be followed. She then continued to the next issue, the requested deadlines and penalties. If an adventurer does not complete a request within the allotted time, the request would be considered incomplete. After being fully explained by Teresa, Eldo was curious and asked Teresa what would happen to him if he completes a request but does not report it before the deadline. Teresa responded that the reporting would be adjusted according to where the request took place. She then reminded Eldo that if he does not report the request within the deadline, it would be considered incomplete. When Teresa finally finished explaining the adventurer's guidelines, Eldo wanted to gather more information and asked if she had any bestiaries or fighting manuals in the adventurer's guild. Eldo was informed that the manuals are in the guild's library and if he wishes to take them, it was better for Eldo to copy the manual since they are not allowed to bring the manual outside of the library. Teresa took some time to think about the best manual suited for Eldo's request. She then handed him the manual for monsters in the outskirts of Ilya. After scanning through the manual, Eldo was surprised to see the monsters that were supposed to be low-level were now C-rank, even thinking that it must have been a joke. 
Eldo wondered if all of the adventurers in his new world were A rank or something. Eldo felt slightly relieved after finding out that there were no monsters drawn in the A rank category. Eldo then went ahead and checked the adventurer's combat manual. He kept skipping the pages since he had already learned those. He was even more enraged when he reached the page for the advanced level, and found it very lacking since it also didn't contain information about one-on-one -on -one battles and anticipating enemy actions. After reading an attack called Miracle Strike, Eldo was puzzled, knowing that the world's strongest critical hit rate was only 20%, and wondered if they meant adventurers that had only just graduated from being a beginner. Eldo wondered if the people in his new world did not know the trick to pull off critical hits. Learning that the information was all lacking and different, Eldo realized that he couldn't fully trust the bestiary or the other manuals. Teresa was surprised when Eldo asked her the way to go to the capital. After informing Eldo that he can go to the capital by taking a ferry, Eldo asked if there was another way since taking a ferry would be very expensive. After learning the ways of getting on the ferry, Teresa lastly suggested that Eldo can swim across the sea, which he immediately declined the idea. Eldo then asked Teresa if there was a request that she could recommend to him as a beginner. She then handed and explained an F-rank request. After looking closely at the request, Eldo was curious why the reward was so high. Teresa explained that it was because the request was hard and was pretty much a D-rank request. Eldo instantly refused and wanted a regular F-rank instead since he was not in a hurry. Teresa wondered why Eldo does not want to take the request since he already proved that he was strong by defeating the examiner. Teresa was then surprised to learn when Eldo told her that he only won as he only managed to hit the miracle strike at the examiner. Teresa suggested even more to Eldo to take a higher rank request, since only expert swordsmen can execute a miracle strike. Eldo decided to pick the request himself and landed on hunting down a kick rabbit. After asking Teresa the location of the second forest, Eldo left the guild and headed towards the second forest. He accidentally met up with the examiner he defeated and was teased by him, calling Eldo the strongest novice and asking if he was about to do a quest. After humbly telling the examiner that he wasn't the strongest novice and that he was headed to hunt kick rabbits, the examiner bid Eldo good luck before leaving. After reaching the second forest of Ilya, Eldo immediately went inside the forest and encountered a beast and wondered if it was a kick rabbit. He was then caught off guard as he encountered a pack of lesser wolves. He then realized that he was tricked by the receptionist and was instead led to a pack of lesser wolves. With the only option being to fight, Eldo drew his sword and swiftly dodged the attacks and landed powerful attacks on the lesser wolves. When Eldo had finally lessened the numbers of the lesser wolves, he began to move even faster, killing a lesser wolf with one hit each. After wiping out the pack, Eldo felt his body getting lighter and wondered if it was a level up. Since he does not know the level system of his new world, he tested a theory by doing a reinforced stone throw. When the stone got buried in the tree, it confirmed that Eldo did level up since he can now use a level 2 skill. He then headed back to the Adventurer's Guild to register his level up and give Teresa a piece of his mind. Upon returning to the Adventurer's Guild, Eldo brought a lesser wolf carcass and asked Teresa if she had referred to the monster he was holding as a kick rabbit. Teresa then feigned ignorance, claiming she didn't know what had transpired. She stated that she had clearly mentioned the presence of only kick rabbits in the kick rabbit forest. Since Eldo had defeated the lesser wolves, it meant he had ventured into the second forest of Ilya by mistake. Realizing that Teresa would persist in playing dumb, Eldo decided to go along with it and requested to cancel the mission since he couldn't complete it due to mistakenly going to the second forest. Eldo grew more annoyed when Teresa mentioned that the request had been completed, as she had inadvertently filled out the procedures for hunting lesser wolves. Eldo's angry expression disappeared instantly upon receiving the rewards for the request. Having defeated six lesser wolves, he received a total of 120,000 gil. Eldo forgave Teresa, thinking that she only assigned him requests suitable for his strength and yielding the highest monetary rewards. Thanks to Teresa, Eldo found a profitable request and inquired if there were more requests to slay lesser wolves, as he planned to take on the challenge again. The next day, Eldo visited a workshop in search of a short sword suitable for his build. Since weapons were crucial for completing requests, Eldo needed a good weapon to compensate for his lack of stats in the future. Displeased with the weapons on display, he asked the shop owner if there were better swords available. When the shop owner presented an expensive sword, Eldo requested to try it out. After a few swings and feeling the sword, Eldo decided to purchase it. With no money left, Eldo went to the Adventurer's Guild looking for requests related to hunting lesser wolves. Upon learning that there were still 32 left for the lesser wolves request kill limit, Eldo was curious about the request kill limit. Teresa explained that it was the number of monsters that would reward the adventurer. They could defeat as many monsters as they wanted, but they wouldn't be rewarded beyond that limit. Eldo decided to take the request to kill 32 lesser wolves, surprising Teresa, who wondered if Eldo could handle it. 
She was puzzled when Eldo mentioned that killing all 32 would take only two hours for him, and planned to accept another request to avoid returning too soon. After deciding that his second request would involve slaying spear mice, Teresa became ecstatic and immediately processed the request. After leaving the Adventurer's Guild, Eldo headed towards the second forest and swiftly completed his first request. He then continued to search for the spear mouse. However, his surroundings were instantly covered in fog. After walking for some time, Eldo saw a mouse with a horn and wondered if it was the spear mouse. As he drew his sword, Eldo was surprised when the spear mouse suddenly screamed. Realizing that more spear mice would surround him, Eldo rushed towards the screaming spear mouse, ending its life. Unfortunately, the spear mouse reinforcements arrived right after he killed the first mouse. Realizing he was at a disadvantage due to compensating for his lack of stats with skills, Eldo encouraged himself and continued to attack from a distance, killing all the spear mice. Noticing multiple injuries, Eldo used the ability Self-Cure to heal the wounds. Eldo continued to slay more spear mice after recovering from his wounds. Upon returning to the Adventurer's Guild, Teresa was surprised that Eldo had slain 276 spear mice. However, Eldo could tell that Teresa was once again playing dumb, as before. Both were astonished to learn what had happened. Realizing that even though the spear mouse was an E-rank monster, they could gather in large numbers. Teresa noticed a horn and immediately identified it as belonging to a monster called Army Spear Mice. Different from normal spear mice, as the Army Spear Mice had a C-rank. Eldo asked if he had failed the request, surprising Teresa who thought Eldo would be worried. She explained that facing an Army Spear Mice alone would mean certain death. Eldo asked if he could change the request to Army Spear Mice, but Teresa immediately declined, stating it was not allowed. To compensate for Eldo's efforts, Teresa informed him that he could still sell the materials from the army spear mice, as they fetched a high price. When Eldo heard that each material sold for 20,000 gil, he did not hesitate and sold everything. After receiving the reward, Eldo noticed an unfamiliar platinum coin. Teresa explained that each platinum coin was worth a million gil, warning Eldo not to show it off, as it could attract thieves. Realizing that the reward money was already substantial, Eldo could now travel to the capital. Teresa was slightly disappointed that Eldo was leaving so soon, as it had been a while since a strong adventurer came to Ilya. Curious, Teresa asked Eldo what he planned to do in the capital. Eldo responded that he had something to do there that would help him progress as an adventurer. After bidding farewell to Teresa and preparing to leave, Teresa ran towards Eldo and apologized for lying about the kick rabbit's request. Eldo didn't mind, but he asked her not to do it again, as someone might get really angry. After leaving the town of Ilya, Eldo headed to the port town. When Eldo finally arrived at the port town, a guard informed him that he could purchase the ticket at the Maxia commercial firm. When Eldo reached the Marxia commercial firm, he was astonished at the immense size of the building. Since Eldo didn't have a letter of introduction, he had to pay 3 million gil. The ticket seller immediately thought Eldo was a famous adventurer, but upon hearing he was unknown, the ticket seller considered it a joke and even complimented it. After boarding the ship, Eldo had to wait and enjoy the trip for three hours before landing at the capital. He then noticed an object hanging in front of him and guessed that it was the relic called the Water Traveling Stone, wondering if it was used to control the ship. Eldo then noticed two women arguing about failing over something. When Eldo saw the ingredients, he immediately recognized them as being for the Pale Green Spirit Potion. When the two women overheard Eldo, they asked if he knew how to brew the potion just by looking at the ingredients. After informing the woman that he knew how to brew the potion, she asked if he could brew it for them, promising generous payment. Eldo, testing the woman's offer, requested 10 million gil. Knowing the huge amount might not be reasonable, he was surprised when the woman mentioned if that was all he requested. Eldo wondered how much money the woman had to easily accept an unfair exchange. After 10 minutes, Eldo finished brewing the potion. Seeing the woman's happy expression, he wondered who she could be. What was missing in the ingredients was the sacred tree leaf, since it was an extremely high-class item. After receiving the payment, Eldo noticed that it was too much. The woman responded that, in fact, it was still not enough for what Eldo had given her. She then handed him a proof of trust from the Maxia company as a token of appreciation. If Eldo showed it in one of their stores or within the capital, it would certify Eldo as trustworthy. Eldo wondered if it was all right to give something of great importance. The woman responded that it was not a problem and that she could at least give that much if one wanted to be a company chairman. Seeing Eldo's puzzled expression, the woman introduced herself as Mina Maxia, the chairman of the Maxia company and the one that operates the ship they were on. Eldo was not expecting to meet and help someone with high status and was very thankful for her. After thanking Eldo for the potion, Mina then asked for his name. After introducing himself, Eldo then asked if there was something out in the ocean. Mina was curious about what Eldo meant, 
Eldo then mentioned that something was getting closer to them. Mina mentioned that the ship was built to withstand the attack of monsters in their route. However, to be safe, Mina asked a crew to check what was out in the ocean. The crew was surprised and terrified to see a sea dragon approaching them. Mina was surprised and couldn't believe that a sea dragon would be in their route since they were 500 kilometers away from the sea dragon's habitat. A sea dragon is an aquatic monster far more powerful than a crank wolf. It uses its spear arms as weapons to stab its opponents. If a novice like Eldo gets hit by those arms, he would be immediately sent to the afterlife. Eldo asked if they would be alright. Unfortunately, the ship was not designed for a sea dragon. Mina asked everyone who could fight to gather in the ship and to take the others inside the ship for refuge. Eldo then noticed that the sea dragon was after the ship's mast. They were now stuck in a situation where they couldn't break the ship's mast. With the only option being to fight, Eldo then asked if anyone in the ship could attack from a long-range distance. After seeing the three mages and two archers, Eldo faced another problem and immediately asked everyone if there was someone who could defend the mast from the sea dragon's attacks. Unfortunately, no one raised their hands as it was common sense that no one could take on the sea dragon's attack. With no option left, Eldo offered to defend the mast himself. Seeing that the sea dragon was now within range, Eldo instructed the mages and archers to start their attack. After launching all of their attacks, the mages and archers were now more terrified since the sea dragon was still charging towards the ship. Thinking that their attacks were ineffective, Eldo reassured them that their attacks were working as they left marks of damage on the sea dragon's body. The mages and archers kept launching their attacks on the sea dragon and only stopped when the sea dragon swam to the deeper parts of the ocean. It then resurfaced near the ship and was about to attack the ship. Fortunately, Eldo was able to block the sea dragon's attack by perfectly timing the attack and using the critical counter to successfully parry the attack. The other adventurers were getting excited seeing Eldo deflecting the sea dragon's attack only using a sword. Eldo was just lucky that the sea dragon's attacks were easy to read for him to completely deflect. Mina then instructed the others to attack while the sea dragon was still visible and easy to mark. The sea dragon then launched the attack. Eldo was able to read the attack and successfully deflected it. However, he didn't notice right away that the sea dragon used both of its hands to attack. Deflecting the other attack was impossible, but his will and strength were enough for the mass not to get destroyed. The others launched another wave of attack and successfully incapacitated the sea dragon. However, it lost its stance and was headed towards Mina and the other civilians. Fortunately for them, Eldo was just in time to fully time and deflect the sea dragon's body. After receiving thanks from Mina and the civilians, Eldo then instructed the others to finish the sea dragon. After the last wave of attack, the sea dragon was finally defeated and sank into the ocean. A civilian couldn't believe that the adventurers were able to defeat a sea dragon. The civilian was about to thank Eldo when he no longer saw him. Eldo went inside one of the rooms of the shop and apologized for his intrusion as he didn't want to stand out. Eldo was not expecting to see Mina. The two had a wonderful conversation in which Mina mentioned that since Eldo saved the lives of those who had boarded the ship, she swore to repay the debt. In a far distant land, men in cloaks were observing the ship and couldn't believe that the sea dragon was defeated. But they were not disappointed since it was just a minor setback for their plans. The cloaked men's group was called the Garden of Despair. The people on the ship were then informed to prepare themselves to disembark since they will be reaching the capital soon. Seeing the structures of the capital, Eldo had hopes and expectations that the capital would be the place where he would change his job from novice to a sage. Seeing a rundown building, Eldo wondered if the ruins he was seeing were the capital's cathedral that he had been searching for so long. He then noticed the portrait of Gias, the god of jobs, carved into the walls. Even though it looked like a mess and no lights were turned on, it didn't matter to Eldo as long as there was a capital cathedral of the god of jobs. Mina noticed Eldo staring at the church and wondered if Eldo needed something from the church since she didn't expect him to be a religious type. When Mina suggested to Eldo that someone could help him go to the church, Eldo accepted the offer. Eldo was then corrected by Mina that the church he was looking at was an old abandoned church decades ago, and the real cathedral was the huge buildings. Eldo was not expecting the building to be the cathedral since it had no image of Gias. Eldo wondered if one could even change jobs in such a place. Eldo then asked if he could go to the ruins without permission. Mina thought Eldo was a religious type but guessed that he only loved the ruins. Mina then warned Eldo that if he went to the abandoned church, chances were that he could meet some thugs living there, and the worst case scenario could be a bandit's hideout. Mina was not worried for Eldo's safety though since he was strong enough to deflect a sea dragon's attack. Eldo didn't want to take the risk and mentioned to Mina that he was only an F rank. Thinking that Eldo was joking, Eldo showed his Adventurer's Guild card to Mina, which made her wonder if the Adventurer's Guild was completely blind or something. Mina offered to have his rank changed since she knows someone in the Guild that could do so. Eldo refused Mina's offer as he didn't want to cause problems for other people. 
Eldo was able to confirm earlier that the skills of the inhabitants of his new world were the same as in BBOs. Unfortunately, the people were just hopelessly bad at fighting. That's why they can only fight reasonably well in situations where they just randomly throw their skills at a stationary target. However, there were certain things one can't do in this world with skills. One also needed stats. For example, even if the sea dragon stood there and let Eldo hit it for 10 hours, Eldo wouldn't be able to defeat it with his current attack power, which is why it was much better if Eldo shouldn't move his rank. After thanking Mina for the information, the two bid their farewells. Eldo roamed around the capital and was able to get himself settled in an inn. He wishes to change his job as soon as possible, but since there's a possibility that there were thugs in the ruins, Eldo was not taking any chances in going there by day because the bandits might see him coming. Eldo plans to sneak into the ruins early in the morning because people couldn't think properly early in the morning. While laying down in his bed and trying to catch some sleep, Eldo could no longer control his stomach growling and decided to eat first since he was starving. Since he still had time before he acted on his plan, Eldo roamed the city to look for a place that sells food. Seeing a restaurant, it didn't look safe to him but Eldo didn't have much of a choice and decided to go inside. He then asked the staff if it was okay if he was alone, to which the staff member answered that it was okay. However, since they are currently crowded, Eldo would have to share a table. Seeing the woman's meal, Eldo informed the staff that he would have the same. After eating a piece of the meat, Eldo was happy to have finally eaten a delicious meal. All of a sudden, a man opened the door while making a scene. He then mentioned that he is a cardholder and should have a seat reserved for him. When the staff member told him that they do not take reservations and that there were no empty seats, the man walked towards Eldo and told him to move so that he could sit. Instead of being afraid, Eldo was more annoyed since he was disturbed, which surprised the man that his intimidation didn't work. Even after reasoning with the man that he could wait for his party members to arrive and wait for his turn to live with everyone else, the man was still very insistent that Eldo leave the table. Eldo could pretty much guess that there was no point in reasoning with the man and just told him again to wait for his turn. Seeing that Eldo still continued to eat, the man became enraged and pulled out his sword. When he was about to attack Eldo, Eldo immediately noticed that the man had a terrible stance, and that the man was only swinging his sword downwards with all his strength. Eldo then picked up the fork on the table and used it to deflect the man's attack. The man couldn't believe that his sword flew after being deflected just by a fork. Since the man attacked Eldo first, he returned the favor with hand-to-hand -hand combat and warned the man that he could break his arm any time. The man was baffled and warned Eldo for being treated poorly and being called an idiot by him. The man then mentioned that he had a bronze card from the Zanis company and that Eldo better prepare himself as the man promised to make Eldo's life a living hell. Curious what a bronze card was, a man informed Eldo that a bronze card is given to adventurers who have been recognized by a company. It is also said to represent the adventurer's fame. After understanding what a bronze card was, Eldo remembered that he had a card as well that was given by the Maxia company. Eldo then mentioned that he also had a bronze card. When Eldo showed his card, the man immediately became weak and more afraid. He was not expecting Eldo to show a gold card from the Maxia company. When Eldo finally settled in his room, he still couldn't sleep due to excessive excitement about shedding the novice job. He was grateful that he could lie down and gather enough strength to face any enemies he might encounter. While walking through the dark alleyways of the capital city, Eldo tested the skill Night Vision and was surprised at its effectiveness. He only hoped that not too many people would know the skill, as it could put Eldo in a world of trouble. Upon reaching the old church near the cliff, he immediately noticed people inside and tried to sneak his way in to avoid confrontation with the church residents. Inside the church, he heard voices from the basement and sensed trouble. Eldo circumvented the church, climbed down the well, and based on his knowledge, expected to find a back door to the basement. Upon reaching the back door, Eldo realized that forcibly opening it without a plan would endanger him, especially since the only accessible way was through the well on his side. To create a distraction, Eldo broke the basement lock, diverting the people inside. After rushing out of the church, he jumped into the well, safely entering the basement through the back door. The basement was filled with crates, and to Eldo's surprise, one contained drugs. He never expected drugs to exist in this new world, recalling their appearance during an episode in BBO when an evil organization distributed them, causing incidents. When Eldo opened the door, he accidentally encountered a bandit, putting him in a tight spot as the bandit immediately called for backup. Under fire from the bandit's arrows, Eldo could only think of changing his job. Recognizing the portrait on the door, he identified it as the job-changing room. Upon seeing the statue of Gias in the room, Eldo immediately blocked the door with the broken shelf. Chanting the spell for the desired profession, Eldo received a blessing and successfully changed his job from a novice to a sage. Eldo felt different after changing his job but had little time to process it as the bandits had already broken down the door. 
Eldo used the fireball skill to repel the enemies trying to get in. Since the distracted enemies heard the commotion in the storage room, Eldo immediately used the skill called Float and escaped through the well. After surveying the landscape, Eldo was about to leave, thinking his business was finished. However, he was fortunate enough to avoid a surprise attack from a cloaked man. The man in the cloak was impressed and complimented Eldo's diversion and infiltration. Recognizing him as a skilled individual, Eldo immediately recognized the crest on the man's body as belonging to the Garden of Despair. The group's purpose and structure are still completely unknown but it appears to be a criminal organization attempting to destroy human society. Despite numerous evil organizations in BBO, the Garden of Despair was by far the most dangerous. The man was surprised that Eldo knew their organization's name, and even more amazed that Eldo knew they had planned the attack on the ship where Eldo was. The man received a report about an unidentified man with a shabby sword on the ship, and asked if Eldo was the one who prevented the ship from sinking. After correcting the man about his sword, Eldo asked what the man would do if he were the one who saved the ship. Eldo was caught off guard when the man asked him to join them and tried to lure Eldo with money and women, anything Eldo would want. Eldo was not expecting to be recruited by a member of the Garden of Despair. After giving it fair thought, Eldo gave his answer, refused the man's offer and told the man that he was not interested. The man still tried to convince Eldo to join, but it was all a cover for another surprise attack. Eldo was able to read the man's attack and dodged it. However, he was not expecting a second attack, which he still fortunately evaded. Annoyed by the man, Eldo threatened him, stating that if he got the chance to kill someone, it would be him. Rushing towards the man and deflecting his attacks, Eldo thrust his sword as he was already close to him. Eldo was surprised that the man was able to block his sword with only a blade. Upon noticing another blade in the man's other hand, Eldo immediately backed off, sensing that the man was about to launch a continuous attack. Within the moments they clashed their weapons, Eldo could tell that the man in the cloak was far superior. The man in the cloak then raised his hands as he warned Eldo that his time was about to run out. Eldo tried a different approach and used the skill called Clay Bullet to attack the man in the cloak. The man laughed, guessing that Eldo's sword felt light because he was a wizard. Eldo then rushed towards the man and was about to attack him with his sword when he suddenly changed his pattern and used magic to attack the man's feet. Thinking that he had dodged Eldo's attack, the man was surprised to find out that his feet had been trapped with a sticky substance which he could not let go. What Eldo used was the skill called Sticky Bomb, a trap spell that sprays a sticky liquid at the moment of impact. The skill looked a lot like the previous ability Eldo used, which was the Clay Bullet. Using the Knight as an advantage, Eldo was able to make the man in cloak think that the attack was the Clay Bullet, but instead was the Sticky Bomb. Realizing that he could not move from his position, it was late for the man in cloak to notice that Eldo was already casting a spell in front of him. Using the skill Flame Bomb in a point-blank rage, Eldo thought that he had successfully defeated the man in the cloak. However, he was surprised that the man was still alive and still had the strength to take a strange pill, which later turned the man into a humanoid monster. After the transformation, the monster launched an attack that caused the bridge to collapse. Eldo immediately recognized the familiar drug called Artificial Devil Drug. It is a type of drug that greatly enhances the user's strength at the cost of losing their intelligence and being unable to return to human form. The fact that the man was able to use the drug meant that the crest and the name weren't the only things they shared from BBO. Eldo realized that if he did not fight the man seriously, he would be the one in trouble. After apologizing to the monster for promising to end him right away, Eldo cast the skill fire arrow. The monster thought of it as a weak attack while catching the fire arrow. However, the monster was not expecting to catch on fire. Eldo was not yet done with his attack as he launched five more fire arrows onto the monster. The monster could only gawk as the succeeding fire arrows landed perfectly on him. After observing for a few seconds, Eldo decided to leave right away as the monster had finally been vanquished. In his room, Eldo was glad that he managed to kill the man who was tracking him. However, he also needed to prepare himself to fight more people like the man in the cloak in the future. Since Eldo's job was now that of a sage, he needed a staff as it was a weapon for sages. One can still cast spells without a staff but the difference in power was quite noticeable. It's for that reason that they were able to defeat the sea dragon. Everyone was well equipped. While roaming around the capital, Eldo visited a weapon store and already expected that the weapons displays were of high grade. Eldo's problem now was that all of the staves were for wizards only. Sages can use every kind of staff there is. However, in order to show the true power of the sage job, it's obvious that one must use the staff for sages. Eldo was curious about who he could ask for help right now. Eldo then visited the Maxia company and met up with Mina to ask for help. Eldo first mentioned how amazing the card Mina gave him. 
he only showed it to the stores and he was treated politely. When Mina asked what Eldo was looking for, she was surprised that he was looking for a staff since she assumed that Eldo was a sword fighter. After being shown Eldo's abilities, Mina still couldn't wrap her head around the fact that Eldo was a sage and was curious about how Eldo was able to deflect all of the sea dragon's attacks. When told by Eldo that all he did was swordsmanship, something even a novice could do, Mina immediately thought that Eldo is some sort of a monster. Thinking that not being a swordsman was a waste for Eldo's talent, Mina understands that Eldo had a good reason for wanting a staff. Mina then showed Eldo the collection of staves that the company has. Eldo was surprised since all of the staves that the Maxia company has were all first-rate items. A staff caught Eldo's attention, and he asked Mina if he could hold it. Mina didn't mind but did not recommend it since it was an artifact excavated from some ancient ruins, and it was also the worst staff they got. After feeling the staff, Eldo decided to take the staff as he could immediately tell that it was a staff for sages. The staff was a top-tier class staff. Eldo assumed that the Maxia company thought that the staff was terrible because wizards tried to use it. Eldo was surprised after noticing that the staff was around 25 million gil. Mina then explained that excavated artifacts were expensive regardless of their performance. When Mina mentioned that Eldo could pay with something other than money, he embarrassingly mentioned that he only has a sword that was worth 150,000 gills. Mina mentioned that what she wishes to purchase from Eldo was the membership numbers on the back of Eldo's guild card, and was willing to offer a total of 30 million gills for it. Eldo then realized that for paying Eldo 30 million gills, he would be doing requests for Mina. Mina clarifies that she was not forcing Eldo to do anything and was only interested in the guild membership numbers in exchange, she would give him the staff. Curious what the value holds for the guild membership numbers, Mina explained that one needs those numbers in order to request a certain adventurer. The requests themselves aren't mandatory, therefore Mina would offer a hefty reward to entice Eldo to accept. Eldo wondered if Mina was paying too much money for an F-rank adventurer. She then clarified that it was even the reason that she has to get the numbers before the other companies recognize Eldo's true potential. After mentioning that 30 million gills was a standard for A-rank adventurers, Eldo realized that Mina was investing in him and humbly accepted her offer. Before leaving and taking the staff, Eldo asked Mina to be gentle with the requests. While walking down the streets of the capital, Eldo was very happy with the deal he made. Not only was he able to obtain a very good weapon for his job, he also received some extra money in the process. He suddenly was shrouded with fear as to what requests Mina would give to him in the future. After passing a small alleyway, Eldo immediately sensed that someone was following him. After sensing someone's presence, Eldo turned around and warned the person who had been following him to show himself, or be marked as Eldo's enemy. A man then emerged and identified himself as someone non-suspicious being part of the guild. The guild staff became curious after witnessing Eldo's actions on the cruise the other day. When Eldo inquired about the reason for the guild staff tailing him, the man responded that he was merely observing, as his primary responsibility involved scouting strong adventurers for the guild. Confused by the term scout, Eldo explained that the guild had a formal subjugation position, offering stable and high rewards, but requiring strength to match. Hearing the guild staff talking, Eldo realized it was similar to a civil servant system. While Eldo's rank was still low, guilds tended to recruit and train adventurers. However, Eldo would likely have to handle troublesome requests if he accepted. Eldo declined the offer, stating his preference for doing his own thing. The guild staff understood and didn't want to cause further problems for Eldo, but before leaving he mentioned that if Eldo ever changed his mind the guild would welcome him. Anyone who noticed the guild staff tailing them was welcome in the guild. They just needed to mention that Lysias had referred them, and the guild would accept their application. Eldo remembered that in BBO there was no such thing as a formal subjugation position. Requests were updated frequently and nothing happened if no one took them. However, in this new world with real people, it made sense that trouble could arise if no one accepted certain requests. Eldo decided not to dwell too much on the guild and opted to take on requests he could handle. However, upon arriving at the Adventurer's Guild, he noticed a scarcity of subjugation quests in the capital. Eldo guessed that regular subjugators had a lot of free time. He approached the front desk and inquired about requests, particularly if there were any monster subjugation requests available. The front desk responded that there weren't many subjugation requests in the capital, as the royal army handled monster defeats as part of their training, resulting in few monsters to take care of. Realizing that he probably wouldn't get decent requests in the capital, Eldo decided to move to another location. Eldo was grateful for the information and asked if he could report a change of jobs. After hearing Eldo's wish to report his job change, the front desk congratulated him on graduating from being a novice. She then asked about Eldo's new job. When Eldo mentioned Sage, the front desk was confused, having never heard of such a job jewel before. Eldo realized that this world only recognized the classes from the coming-of-age ceremony, 
Therefore, the job jewel would likely not recognize his new job. To register one's profession in the guild, certification using a job jewel was required. If an adventurer was a wizard, for example, they would need to touch the wizard jewel for certification. Eldo decided not to change his registration since his new job couldn't be certified. The front desk suggested Eldo use an inferior jewel, as there might be a chance it could work. Confused, Eldo asked for clarification and she explained that she meant inferior jobs like Berserker and Sayat. She mentioned witnessing some inferior jobs in low-level parties, but most couldn't keep up and usually quit halfway. Eldo then realized what had happened. In BBO, there were two types of jobs, basic and superior. Basic jobs included wizards, swordsmen, archers, healers, and so on. Superior jobs included sages, heroes, saints, berserkers, and so on. Getting a superior job from the coming-of-age ceremony was very rare. In BBO, superior jobs were considered successful, but in this world, they seemed to be considered failures. Eldo was still puzzled why people with superior job skills were getting kicked out from the party when they still held more top-tier skills. Eldo asked the front desk why being a saint was considered an inferior job, as the divine healing skill they learned at low levels should heal more than regular healers. Eldo was surprised when the front desk did not know what divine heal was. Uncertain about the situation, Eldo told the front desk that he would just stay as a novice instead. When Eldo left the Adventurer's Guild, he visited Mina first before leaving the capital. Mina understood Eldo's decision since there was a lack of requests in the capital. She was also disappointed and thought that Eldo going to the countryside would be a waste for the country. Mina then explained that a few powerful adventurers could have a severe impact on the economy, and Eldo was one of them. Eldo prevented the Maxia Company's ship from sinking, which was full of business executives and guild leaders, including Mina herself. If the ship had sunk, the country would be in chaos. When Mina asked which city Eldo was planning to go to next, Eldo mentioned that he decided to go to Fiesta since it was close to the capital. Mina then remembered that there was one good request in the capital, the subjugation of a C-rank monster, the Great Mole. Since Eldo had never heard of such a request, he asked where he needed to go to kill it. Mina mentioned that the Great Mole appeared in the Maxia Company's field. She then offered Eldo 500,000 gills for each he defeated, and if possible, asked to defeat all Great Moles. When Eldo accepted the request, Mina felt relieved as the quest was difficult, and she thought Eldo would refuse. Eldo wondered why. Mina then explained that great moles travel underground, so it is difficult to deal with them. After finishing their conversation, Eldo was told to grab a map and request form before leaving. Eldo followed the map and arrived at the farming region. He saw a small house in the middle of the field and decided to knock on it. When the woman opened the door, Eldo informed her that she had accepted the subjugation request. The woman was very happy that someone had accepted the request. When Eldo asked which field was from the Maxia Company, he was surprised when the woman mentioned that all of the fields belonged to the Maxia Company. Feeling like being tricked by Mina, Eldo had no choice but just to give it a try. When Eldo mentioned that the request may cause the field to be damaged, the woman responded that it was fine as long as Eldo does not burn it with fire magic. Eldo used the skill ground bait and lured the great moles out into the open. Enraged, a swarm of great moles headed towards Eldo. Eldo then used the skill ice pillars to impale the great moles in place. He then later apologized to the woman as he messed up the fields more than he intended. After completing the request, Eldo returned to the capital and informed Mina that the subjugation was already finished, which greatly surprised her. Mina didn't expect that a huge number of great moles would only take three hours for Eldo. Curious, she asked Eldo how he subjugated the great moles. After informing Mina that he used magic to lure the great moles out and impaled them, he then bid farewell and headed to Fiesta. Before leaving, Eldo was surprised by the huge reward he received after finishing the request. He thought that he was out of the ordinary. However, the Maxia company was in a completely different league. When Eldo arrived at Fiesta, he was still a little disappointed by the small number of available requests and wondered if it was because the city was near the capital. After asking a couple of inquiries, Eldo took the requests for Widow Mantis and Huge Toyed Subjugation. The front desk was glad that there were still some requests left. Curious by what the front desk meant, the front desk mentioned that Fiesta now has two big-name adventurers, one of them being the Flame Spear. Just by hearing the name, Eldo could immediately tell that the person was very strong. The front desk mentioned that adventurers with a proven track record could get an alias. Since the adventurer Gillart was missing, Flame Spear is currently the strongest adventurer in the world. Hearing just how amazing the adventurer was, Eldo was excited to meet him in the future. After leaving the adventurer's guild, Eldo then headed towards the forest. He used the skill called Magic Search and immediately located the Weed Mantis 10 kilometers away. He then employed another ability called Magic Invisibility, a concealment skill. Using any other magic would dispel it, 
but it allows Eldo to get a free shot on enemies. While calmly walking towards the Weed Mantis, Eldo cast the Skill Flame Circle to entrap the Weed Mantis. In just a few moments, Eldo finished one of the requests, using Magic Search to locate enemies, then Magic Invisibility to get closer and attack the monsters with offensive magic was a basic trait for solo hunting as a sage. There were a few other patterns, but the surprise attack is quite efficient to hunt down bigger numbers. Eldo was surprised after hearing noise from afar. Wondering where the noise could come from, Eldo then used Magic Search to know what was happening. He could tell that someone was fighting against an area boss. Area bosses are powerful monsters that show up according to a specific cycle depending on the area. Area bosses give a huge amount of experience when you defeat them, so they're a good way to level up. Using magic invisibility again, Eldo wanted to investigate and know what happened in the fight. Area bosses give a lot of experience, even if they're defeated by two people. If Eldo sees the adventurer struggling, he would offer help when he sees an opening. Eldo was silently observing the fight between a woman wielding a spear and a huge ape. When the woman tried stabbing the ape using her spear, she was easily swatted away by the huge ape. Seeing that the woman was at a disadvantage, Eldo asked if she was okay. Surprised by Eldo's presence, she immediately told him to get out of the area. After giving a warning to Eldo, the woman rushed and faced the huge ape. Eldo had already expected that the area boss would be the raging ape. The raging ape moves quite fast for its size, making it much harder to solo than the sea dragon. What Eldo didn't expect was the one small female adventurer fighting the raging ape. Seeing that the situation looked dire, Eldo wanted to help the female adventurer. However, his skills right now aren't enough to defeat the raging ape. Eldo would have to spend some skill points to increase its power. Usually, one needed to go through a ritual in a church to acquire skills, but one could also obtain them through commands just like in BBO. Eldo was able to obtain the skills Blood Poison and Shadow Fog from the system. Setting up a trap, Eldo placed a sticky bomb from a distance and lastly used the magic taunt to lure the raging ape towards him. The female adventurer was surprised that the raging ape suddenly changed course and was now headed towards Eldo. With Eldo's plan in motion, all he had to do was stand still. When the raging ape was finally close, it stepped on the sticky bomb and ended up slipping, which made the sticky bomb more effective since the raging ape was now fully trapped on the ground. Using Shadow Fog to block the raging ape's vision, Eldo then used Blood Poison and landed a direct hit on the raging ape. The effects of the ability Shadow Fog take away the opponent's vision while Blood Poison drains their vitality. The female adventurer was amazed that Eldo was able to restrain the raging ape since she couldn't even handle the monster properly. Eldo then noticed the woman's injury and instantly healed her. Confused that the pain had vanished, Eldo explained that he used healing magic on her. The woman couldn't believe that Eldo was able to use healing magic and offensive magic, as she had never heard of an adventurer that could do both. Hearing the woman's words, Eldo guessed that even adventurers don't know what sages are if they don't know what self-cure is. Eldo then suggested to the woman that they should direct their focus on the raging ape since he has not completely restrained him because his skills are not high level enough yet. If Eldo keeps using blood poison on the raging ape, Eldo will beat him eventually, but that would take Eldo forever. Eldo then suggested to the woman if they should look for reinforcements, since he heard that the strongest adventurer was nearby and called himself the Flame Spear. When the woman mentioned that the Flaming Spear was her, she then introduced herself as Melia. Eldo was not expecting for the Flame Spear to be a woman and thought that since she was the strongest, the Raging Ape would be no match against her. After Eldo introduced himself, Eldo was surprised when Melia apologized since she couldn't manage to do anything against the Raging Ape. Eldo then explained that he wasn't criticizing her and assumed that the reason why Melia was called the Flame Spear is that she has the skill Flame Weapon. The woman was surprised that Eldo knew of such knowledge. With the Flame Weapon in her arsenal, that could only mean that Melia has a superior job in BBO but is inferior in this world. The job is called Hero. Eldo thought of it as a waste since Hero's superior skills were extremely good. If Melia had the knowledge and access to superior skills, the Raging Ape would be no match against her. In that case, they can probably end the battle quickly and make use of Melia's title. Eldo asked a favor from Melia. While he attracts the ape's aggro, Eldo wishes for Melia to keep attacking non-stop. Eldo suggested that an inferior skill like combo attack should work just fine. Eldo was taken aback when Melia didn't know about a combo attack. In the end, Eldo asked for Melia to repeat what he said. After purchasing the skill combo attack, Melia was surprised to find out such a way to obtain a skill. When Eldo instructed Melia to swing her spear while chanting combo attack, Melia was surprised to see that the end of her spear was now shrouded with power. Confused, Melia asked if she just activated a skill and asked if that is how they learn skills. Surprised about Eldo's knowledge, she asked who really Eldo was. Eldo just responded that he was just their friendly neighborhood F-rank adventurer who knows a thing or two. While the two were still arguing about Eldo's true rank, they were not expecting a huge boulder to be thrown away. 
What had happened was the raging ape had finally got rid of all the glue from the ground and proceeded to launch consecutive attacks towards them. Eldo plans to take away the raging ape's vision again and warns Milia to be careful of the raging ape's random attacks. As the raging ape kept on swinging its arms wildly, Milia couldn't get a chance to attack without being hit by the raging ape. Eldo then plans to deactivate the status ailment and attract all the aggro towards him. He then instructed Milia to use the combo attack he just learned on the raging ape. Thinking that it was impossible, Eldo reassured Milia that it would be fine as he promised that he would hold back the raging ape. All Milia has to do is to stop hesitating and use all her might to attack. Gaining her confidence back, Milia is now ready and awaits Eldo's signal. Eldo then released the raging monster from the shadow fog and lured it towards him. When the raging ape was already close to Eldo and was about to land its attack on him, Eldo was able to block the raging ape's punch with the use of magic guard. Even though the magic guard was not impregnable, it was the best defensive skill Eldo could use as a sage. He then gave Melia the signal to launch her attack. Casting flame weapon on her spear, Melia used the skill combo attack on the raging ape and was able to land a direct hit on the raging ape's face. All of a sudden, the end of the spear suddenly was now engulfed in flames. Seeing her spear getting more powerful, Melia became more confident in ending the raging ape's life completely. Melia thrust her spear onto the raging ape. The flames of the spear went through the raging ape's back and ended up making a hole in the raging ape's body, completely defeating it. Melia was amazed, since she never thought that she would be able to use such a powerful attack. While talking to Eldo, Melia still couldn't believe that he was just an F-rank adventurer. Eldo then asks a favor from Melia and suggests that they form a party together. Eldo has been fighting against a lot of boss-class monsters recently. If possible, he'd like to solo them to get more experience from that, but it would take Eldo ages on his own. Since he couldn't do it fast enough by himself, Eldo was hoping that with Melia's firepower, they could defeat all the boss-class monsters they wanted to. After establishing the share of the rewards and even teaching Melia some good skills, Melia accepted Eldo's offer as she could see that he was not a bad person. The two had now established the greatest duo ever. Eldo taught Melia how to build her skill set, using skill points to acquire new skills, providing her the freedom to choose her preferred fighting style. The tricky part was that they couldn't learn all the available skills as they leveled up. Once an adventurer learned a skill, the skill points wouldn't be refunded. Worried about making a mistake in selecting the skills, Melia asked Eldo for guidance on the skills that would make her stronger. Eldo had a build in mind that he believed to be the strongest, but he wasn't sure if Melia would like it. Without hesitation, Melia asked about the build Eldo was talking about. Before learning the strongest build, Eldo asked Melia first if she had ever learned a skill before. Melia responded that she had learned a skill before. However, before meeting Eldo, Melia had always thought that skills were something one learns through experience and the weapons they used. That method is how Melia learned Flame Weapon. Eldo knows that one can learn basic skills at a church, but he wasn't sure if people knew that since the understanding of skills in this new world is not that advanced. After asking Melia about her current level, Eldo estimated that Melia only needed a couple more levels. Melia was more concerned about the raging ape they had defeated since they still had to bring it to the guild. Eldo reassured Melia that they do not need to do that. He then proceeded to cast a magic spell called Magic Storage, which absorbed the raging ape's dead body. Surprised at what she had just witnessed, Melia asked where the raging ape's body went. Eldo explained that he simply used magic storage to put the body in a different dimension. Curious about the skill, Melia didn't dwell on it too much, thinking that Eldo is like an endless bag of surprises. The two then headed further into the forest and fought off multiple monsters, not realizing that the sun had already set. Eldo then told Melia that they were done for the day and would be heading back. Arriving at the Adventurer's Guild, the front desk asked what the monster was. When Melia told her that it was the Raging Ape, an A-rank monster, the front desk excused herself as she had never seen the monster before. While the front desk was getting the branch manager, Eldo asked Melia a favor, and to just let the guild know that she had defeated the Raging Ape on her own. Eldo explained that he doesn't really want credit for defeating the Raging Ape. He doesn't want to deal with the huge uproar that would come if people found out that a novice defeated an A-rank monster. Melia accepted Eldo's decision and if he ever changes his mind then he could just tell her. The branch manager had finally arrived and asked if they really defeated an A-rank monster. When Melia mentioned that it was the Raging Ape and asked how much it cost, the branch manager could not believe that they were able to defeat such a monster. All of a sudden, Melia mentioned to the branch manager that it was Eldo who mostly subdued the monster which surprised him. Eldo then reminded her of the favor he asked for. Melia apologized as she had never been asked by anyone to keep a secret before. The branch manager had never seen Eldo before and asked for his alias. Melia then introduced him to the branch manager as Eldo, an F-rank novice. 
Hearing that Eldo was an F-rank, the branch manager didn't believe Melia's words since there was no way an F-rank could stand a chance against an A-rank monster. Melia then mentioned that Eldo had completely been cheated. It was all because of the system that doesn't let novices rank up. Eldo was surprised to learn that novices do not rank up. Melia added that novices can't get higher ranks and inferior jobs have a harder time going up as well, which also gave Melia a hard time getting to B rank. It was a method designed to prevent adventurers from dying because they can't handle higher level requests. Eldo wondered what was wrong if novices could do the same requests. Melia heard in the past that ranks went up regardless of one's job, but about 10 years ago when Cardinal Georgia took leadership, he reformed the system to what it is now. The branch manager then apologized to Eldo as he was only abiding by the rules. Eldo felt like a conspiracy is in the midst since the ranking system is now based on one's individual strength. He wondered if Cardinal Georges hated novices and inferior jobs or something. Eldo could tell that something sketchy was happening. The branch manager gradually believed that Eldo was the one that defeated the raging ape. He then asked Eldo if he was registered in Ilya. Surprised that the branch manager knew of the guild he registered with, the branch manager explained that there was a rumor going around about an F-rank novice from Ilya with the same name as Eldo and defeated a sea dragon directly. Since the branch manager was now confronting Eldo, he wondered if he could ask a special favor. If Eldo has a recommendation from the guild branch manager and the achievements to back up, Eldo's rank would rise. The branch manager then had a look at Eldo's guild card, and when he saw that he was a sage he was a little disappointed since it was an inferior job and had little information about it. When Melia mentioned that she would have been treated as a novice if she was born decades early, that is where Eldo realized that the hero job was an unknown job until recently. Though the job Melia is much known to all adventurers, Eldo still thinks that her job as a hero was still very much unknown. Even though the sage job is pretty much unknown and possibly be treated as an unknown job forever, Eldo did not think much of it since he himself perfectly knows everything about there is to sages. The branch manager congratulated Eldo for updating his rank which was now rank E. Unfortunately they cannot increase the rank much higher since the system can only increase the rank once at a time. While walking down the street, Eldo couldn't believe that the raging ape's carcass was worth over a hundred million. After placing the money inside his magic storage, Eldo was asked by Melia when they will be learning about her skill, to which Eldo suggested that they would have to talk about it before they set out for the new hunting ground since it was already late. The next day arrived and Eldo asked Melia if her heart was ready. Melia was quite puzzled since she was a blood tiger. Seeing Melia's concerned look, Eldo was sure that blood tigers were not that big of a deal in BBO. Melia explained that the blood tiger is a superior B-rank monster. It has a high attack power and durability, and its mobility itself is far higher than the raging ape. Eldo was not phased and was sure that Melia would be fine after learning the skill build Eldo taught her early in the morning. Even though Melia was a little skeptical, somehow she feels that she can honestly defeat the blood tiger on her own. Melia then started rushing towards the blood tiger, coincidentally so does the blood tiger towards her. Before reaching the blood tiger, Melia activated the skill attack field and was able to swiftly move behind the blood tiger. Melia then followed up with the combo attack skill and damaged the blood tiger's face. When the blood tiger moved away as it felt much pain, Melia then used guard pierce on the blood tiger. Guard pierce is a skill that lowers the defense of the area it touches. Melia then used her last skill support attack a skill that increases the power of the user's next attack several times. The Blood Tiger was now in panic and hurriedly ran away from the fight. Melia then uses Full Burst Crash. The user receives an explosive increase in power without canceling the strengthening skills. When the Blood Tiger was about to successfully escape, Melia launched the attack and successfully landed the attack. Melia couldn't believe that she actually defeated a Blood Tiger on her own, when suddenly another Blood Tiger sneaked an attack behind Melia. Luckily for her, Eldo jumped in and blocked the attack. He then mentioned to her that the guard of the hero is much stronger than of a sage's. He also used a magic search and found three more blood tigers a little ahead. After dealing with the blood tiger himself, Eldo wishes for Melia to deal with the other blood tigers and use the combos and skills so that she would become even more stronger. Eldo then used a fire arrow on the blood tiger and burnt it easily. Seeing how Eldo easily defeated the blood tiger, she was starting to think that Eldo can hunt all of the blood tigers in the area himself. Eldo reassures Melia that he could not do that because his level is very low and couldn't burst down enemies with his magic power. That was the reason why Eldo wished to party with Melia and relied on her to make the hunt go smoothly. Eldo then mentioned that there were still a pack of blood tigers a little away from them, and since they still got a lot of time left, the two decided to continue hunting. Melia was now learning the hero's defensive skill, Overguard. Eldo mentioned that if she were to focus in one place, the guard would become firmer. The Overguard skill was very useful for responding to both multiple attacks and single attacks. 
Now that she had improved her offensive and defensive skills, Melia was very confident that she can aim not just for an A rank, but maybe even an S rank. Hearing Melia, Eldo told her if that was her goal, then she would have to perfect her skill build first. Eldo then asked if she was ready because her next opponent would be against multiple enemies. Very confident in her skill build, Melia immediately leaped towards the pack of blood tigers. Somehow Eldo felt that there was something wrong with their hunt. Using the skills Shockwave and Wide Attack, Melia was able to cause damage towards the blood tigers but was surprised to find out that her skills didn't finish them off. She then used Wide Attack again and noticed that her attacks were not reaching the Blood Tigers. Now in a dangerous state, Melia used Overguard to protect herself while being attacked by the Pack of Blood Tigers. Eldo then used a Fire Arrow on the Pack of Blood Tigers and defeated it by himself. Eldo then lectured Melia about her two mistakes. The first one was that she didn't strengthen her Shockwave with Support Attack, and the second was she didn't grasp the cooldown of Wide Attack. Melia needed to wait 10 seconds before she could use Wide Attack for a second time. In cases like that, Melia needs to use another skill. Seeing that Melia was scared of him, Eldo apologized for getting carried away in the moment. Eldo complimented how fast Melia defended herself and used Overguard all over her body. After the lecture, the two then decided to move on to the next one. Upon returning to the Adventurer's Guild, the branch manager and front desk staff were surprised and couldn't believe it when Eldo asked if they could sell all the blood of the Blood Tigers they brought. All 73 Blood Tigers. The branch manager never expected that the two could hunt so many, even for the flame spear. Melia explained that Eldo's ability was the real deal, and that the E rank was a complete undervaluation of him. The branch manager then noticed something and asked Eldo what he was doing. Eldo explained that he was using magic storage to store monsters in a different space. The branch manager had no clue what Eldo even mentioned but was surprised that he could have such an impressive skill. The branch manager understands Eldo's request of having his skill knowledge be kept secret. Eldo still couldn't fully trust the branch manager's words but he was more confident that anyone would believe that all of his achievements could be done by just a novice. The branch manager then told him that he would gladly raise Eldo's rank to D rank. However, raising it to C rank would require the approval of other branch managers. Eldo understood the requirements and asked to be promoted at the next rank. Since Eldo was now D rank, the branch manager asked Eldo to continue hunting after increasing his rank. Since they already have so much money, Eldo was planning to focus more on leveling up for the time being. Melia then mentioned that she wishes to take requests to pile on guild achievements to rank up. That way, she would be closer to her goal. The branch manager then mentioned that there was a request that only strong adventurers like them could take. It was a reconnaissance mission within the Forest of Death. Eldo could already feel something bad just hearing the name of the forest. It was said that only about 10% of the people who venture into the Forest of Death could get out alive. The branch manager explained for that specific reason, only high-level monsters are inside the Forest of Death. Therefore, the guild must choose carefully who they decide to send. Before accepting the request, Eldo asked if he could have a look at the contents of the request. After explaining to Eldo about the large pillar in the forest, Eldo could immediately tell that it was the ceiling pillar. The ceiling pillar seals monsters even stronger than the area boss, a raid boss. In BBO, that seal was broken during an event, and powerful monsters appeared. The branch manager mentioned that the request was to look at the ceiling pillar. He then mentioned in the report the other day that there was something resembling the ceiling pillar from a distance, and that they would have to investigate. When Eldo mentioned Stampede Alert, the branch manager was surprised that Eldo even knew of that and thought that Eldo was a guild executing something. Stampede was a phenomenon that occurs when a large number of monsters appear, signaling that the pillar seal was about to be undone. The branch manager mentioned that they have a warding device that had been set up as a countermeasure. However, since there's only one, they need to be sure to know in which town to put it in at a time. Realizing the dangerous situation the nearby towns were in, Eldo accepted the request which made the branch manager feel relieved, and was fully in debt to Eldo. Eldo warned Melia that the situation this time was very dangerous, and the worst case was that they would be caught in the stampede. Melia was not scared and was willing to take the risk. The next day came, and the two were busy taking care of the monsters. That is where Eldo realized why the forest was called the Forest of Death, as the place was full of vicious monsters. Melia was still very confident of their power and asked that they should keep moving. Seeing that Melia was quite in a rush to obtain achievements, Eldo asked what was the matter since it's often not good to be in such a hurry. Melia then mentioned the adventurer's honor system. If an A-rank adventurer made any significant contributions to the country, then the adventurer would receive a noble rank. That was the only way for an adventurer to become a noble. Melia's goal was to become a noble and restore the name of her family which fell into ruin and lost its title. Eldo understood Melia's situation which is why he mentioned to her that all the more reason that they stay alive and get achievements, and to keep their heads up. 
When the two finally reached the ceiling pillar, Eldo noticed that it was colored orange and was pointing at Fias. They've got about five days before the raid boss shows up. Melia was amazed that Eldo could tell all that information by just looking at it. Eldo explained that one could tell by just looking at the color. The colors of the pillars are like a countdown, going from blue to yellow to orange to red and lastly to black. Since they only have five days left, they've got to hurry since there was not a lot of time to prepare. Upon returning to the Adventurer's Guild, the branch manager was surprised that they've already returned. When they mentioned that the stampede would come in five days' time, the branch manager was surprised and asked what they meant. Eldo then mentioned the color countdown of the pillar that could determine the exact time and day the stampede would break. The branch manager was grateful for their information and hurriedly arranged the warding device. He apologized to the two for leaving them in a hurry. He then mentioned that the device would take four days to activate but they would make it in time before the stampede arrived. As for their reward, Eldo would be recommended for a promotion to C rank. If they can make it through the stampede then the branch manager would use it as an achievement to recommend Melia for an A rank promotion test. The branch manager asked for the two to stay as they would be getting ready for the stampede. The day of the stampede had arrived, and Melia was astonished at how the barrier looked. It was the first time Melia had seen it and wondered if it was enough to stop the stampede. Eldo explained that the barrier's purpose was not to prevent the invasion of the monsters. The goal was to simply keep the monsters away from the city by covering it in a special type of magic. All of a sudden the barrier disappeared which alarmed the two. When they headed towards the device to investigate, they were surprised to see the device was damaged. When Eldo asked what happened a man explained that a guy pretended to be part of the guards to destroy the device. When Eldo looked at the dead body he immediately noticed the crest of the Garden of Despair. Eldo was not expecting that organization to pull one of their schemes in the middle of a stampede. When Eldo asked if the device could be fixed right away, Unfortunately, the man mentioned that the device was unknown since it came from their ancestors. The man then mentioned that he could try to fix it, but even if they managed to fix it, it will need to charge up again and would take another four days. With their situation becoming more dire, the branch manager asked for the adventurer's assistance to evacuate the town and its citizens. Eldo knows that evacuating and running away would do them no good. Once the raid boss appears, everything would be in ruin once it crosses its path. With no choice left, Eldo asked Melia to take care of the city as he plans to stop the stampede on his own. Seeing that Melia was worried for his safety, Eldo reassured her that he had a plan. However, the plan itself is not perfect and asked Melia to act as if Eldo would fail the plan. While headed towards the swarm of monsters, Eldo knows that he couldn't handle the monsters on his own. However, there was another way to stop the stampede and that is defeating the stampede boss. When Eldo reached the pillar, the pillar broke which released the raid boss, the heaven-destroying lightning dragon. A huge dragon with lightning all over its body. In BBO, Sage was called the strongest job. It comprised about 80% of the player population. Eldo was planning to demonstrate the reason why Sage is the strongest job. Melia alerted everyone that a horde of monsters was approaching, emphasizing the need to move as quickly as possible. When an observer warned that the horde was about to reach them, Melia rushed outside without hesitation, asking the guards to close the city gates as she intended to hold them off as long as possible. Concerned that Eldo might not last against the raid boss, Melia could only hope for his safety. Eldo, currently facing the raid boss heaven-destroying lightning dragon, felt nostalgic, remembering when he first started playing BBO. The heaven-destroying lightning dragon had appeared as a high-difficulty boss in the early game, giving Eldo and his comrades a hard time. Back then, despite reaching the level cap, Eldo wasn't skilled enough to defeat the heaven-destroying lightning dragon, resulting in his death a hundred times. Facing the same monster now, Eldo was unfazed, not even flinching when lightning hit a nearby tree. Although the lightning dragon had a nuisance area of effect, AOE damage effect, Eldo knew how to counter it. When Eldo was suddenly struck by lightning, he remained unharmed due to his anti-magic electric, an electricity attribute resistance skill. With this skill, Eldo was confident in nullifying some of the damage. When the raid boss resorted to a physical attack, Eldo immediately dodged it, knowing that taking a direct hit was practically suicide for now. Seeing a dark cloud forming in the sky, Eldo recognized it as divine lightning. Fortunately, he was able to escape, albeit not without some damage. The divine lightning skill cast a lightning bolt directly underneath and losing focus meant certain death for Eldo. Already at a disadvantage facing the raid boss at level 18, one should be at least level 50. Using self-cure, Eldo healed some of the damage and remained confident since he had defeated the lightning dragon many times in the past. Eldo then cast multiple enhancement spells including one that enhanced his weapon with the lightning dragon's weakness, the earth attribute. Eldo felt an unusual burden on his body and difficulty controlling his skills due to the stacking spells. Nevertheless, Eldo's magic power alone increased a thousandfold. 
Sensing another divine lightning strike, Eldo immediately dodged it and rushed towards the lightning dragon's body. The dragon struck lightning onto the ground, generating a cloud of smoke that disrupted Eldo's vision. Having fought the lightning dragon multiple times before, Eldo knew its pattern and was able to dodge the next attack within the thick smoke. When the lightning dragon attempted another attack, Eldo successfully dodged it. Despite limited visibility due to the thick smoke, Eldo's body remembered the attacks. As Eldo was about to cast a spell he momentarily stopped, feeling the consequences of stacking multiple spells, which drained not only his MP but also his HP. Knowing he had only one shot to win at his current level, Eldo dodged the lightning dragon's attacks using knowledge from BBO. Left with only one option, Eldo stacked up every enhancement he had and used his strongest attack, the Earth Attribute Magic Gigantic Boulder Crushing Blow, landing a direct hit on the lightning dragon's head. Wondering if he had defeated the raid boss in one blow, he then saw the lightning dragon open its eyes. Realizing it was a skill worse than Divine Lightning, a super powerful magic attack that couldn't be avoided the lightning strike of extinction. If Eldo got hit, not even his ashes would remain. Trapped under the big spell, Eldo had only one more thing he could do. Use what little magic he had left to cast another gigantic boulder crushing blow. Due to low mana, Eldo could only cast one third of the boulder's size. The boulder landed right at the lightning dragon's back, defeating it completely. With Eldo alone, the subjugation of the raid boss was complete. Inside the forest, Melia busied herself taking care of the horde of monsters. She deftly deflected the monster's attacks while dealing damage simultaneously, resulting in her defeating the raging ape. Unfortunately, Melia could feel the toll of facing the horde alone, pondering that the forest might be where she would lay to rest. Suddenly, the blood tiger in front of her vanished. She then saw Eldo flying over the forest. After apologizing for taking so long, Eldo informed her that he managed to defeat the raid boss, which was the reason the stampede had stopped. As proof of his victory, Eldo showed the horn of the lightning dragon, Milia, witnessing for the first time a material from an S-rank monster, realized Eldo had faced an S-rank monster on his own. After thanking Eldo for saving her life once again, Eldo asked a favor of Milia. Since she had come to the forest to stop the stampede alone, Eldo wished for Milia to take credit for defeating the raid boss and stopping the stampede. Milia was surprised by the request and immediately refused not wanting credit for something she wasn't part of. Milia then tried to reason with Eldo, explaining that the reward would be immeasurable, and he should be the one to take the credit. However, Eldo reasoned with Milia that it would make more sense for her to take the credit since, initially, no one would believe that a D-rank adventurer could defeat an S-rank monster. Moreover, Eldo wished for Milia to achieve her goal and become a noble, which having noble backing would greatly benefit. Milia finally gave in and promised Eldo that once she became a noble, she would repay her debt to him. After thanking Eldo again, Milia found Eldo quite odd, being a D-rank adventurer able to defeat an S-rank and she thought he might not be human from their world. Before heading back to the city, Eldo asked that they get their story straight, but when Melia responded to leave it up to her, Eldo became even more worried. The other adventurers who were posted outside the city walls were curious why no monsters were coming towards the city. The observer found it weird since the horde was about to reach the city earlier but suddenly vanished. They then saw Melia coming towards them and wondered what she was doing. Melia then announced that she had defeated the S-rank monster that appeared from the ceiling pillar. She explained that the reason the horde of monsters disappeared was because the source was gone. The other adventurers were still puzzled by Melia's news. As proof of their victory, Melia showed the material from the S-rank monster. The low-rank adventurers were amazed at the material as they could feel the power emanating from it. The adventurers then cheered when they finally believed that Melia had defeated the S-rank monster and saved them from further harm. The guild branch manager personally congratulated Melia, not knowing if defeating the monster from the pillar was possible. When the barrier broke, the branch manager thought they were done for and was really thankful that Melia saved them from the monsters. When the guild branch manager asked about Eldo, Melia told him that Eldo evacuated since he couldn't keep up in battles against S-ranks. While Melia was trying to explain to the guild branch manager what happened, Eldo looked far and hoped that everything was going well with Melia. Back at the Adventurer's Guild, Melia was still explaining that she was able to defeat the lightning dragon by targeting the dragon's horns. The branch manager thought that dragon's horns were the hardest and most difficult part, and jokingly told Melia that her title was really not for show. The guild branch manager thought that the achievement was so great that it could promote Melia directly to S-rank. However, he didn't have the authority to make such a decision, and could only vouch for her as much as possible. 
Seeing how the guild branch manager bowed and thanked Melia again, she could feel the branch manager's sincerity. Eldo then met up with Melia outside of the Adventurer's Guild, apologizing for making Melia feel guilty about lying to everyone, but still thankful that she was much closer to her goal now. When Melia asked what Eldo was going to do next, he responded that he plans to increase his level and take on more requests. He wondered if there were more requests like the Forest of Death where moderately strong monsters appear. Melia could only show an awkward smile as Eldo called high-level monsters moderately strong ones. Melia then mentioned to Eldo a story that she was told earlier. Apparently, there was a massive outbreak of monsters in the Great Forest of Elias. Since it was so close to the town, there had been a flood of requests to subjugate the monsters. Melia still had to stay in the city for her assessment. She then asked Eldo to go if he was interested. Eldo was indeed interested but was a little sad, knowing that once he headed towards the town of Elias, he would have to part ways with Melia. Melia understood and was thankful to Eldo for everything. Melia was then embarrassed when Eldo mentioned that it was not their final farewell since he still needed her to take credit whenever he did something huge. After a little friendly argument, the two shook hands and bid each other farewell. After saying his goodbye to the Adventurer's Guild, Eldo was now headed to the town of Elias. At the depths of the Great Forest of Elias, a blood tiger was hurriedly running away from something when all of a sudden, a hatchet landed on its head and was followed up by multiple arrows to the body. Under the heavy rain, orc-like monsters were staring down at the dead blood tiger. All of a sudden, a huge shadow cast over them and picked up the dead blood tiger's body and ripped it in half. The huge monster showered the blood of the blood tiger while it shouted for domination. That is the end of the recap for now, please read the pinned comment about the next part.